Hello and welcome to our next session. I am Parvez Khan. I am Assistant Professor in the Department of Journalism and Mass Communication, Kohat University of Science and Technology. The subject is Communication Research Methods. The course code is JMC481. It's a lecture number 19, which is Evolution of Mass Media Research. But before we talk about the objectives, it's important to talk about why we are going to uh, go into details about the evolution of mass media. It's important to consider that with technological advancement, uh, research also changes with time. Uh, we were into positivist approach. We had different approaches for communication studies. Uh, then came the effect studies. So the main purpose is that with evolution, even the patterns of research changes. So the objectives are the students will be able to understand the evolution of media research and it will enhance the student's capacity to conceptualize various approaches in mass media research. Along with this, students will be able to understand how media evolved from effect studies towards various different approaches today. So it's important that in this context we'll be discussing the entire topic of today because uh, with changes uh, come even the pattern changes in research with evolution in media pattern research changes. So we have to look into a big picture first. Why, why is the bigger picture and why communication is important? Because communication is a battleground of power. We have to look into media in terms of power, surveillance, strength, who's running the media, who's behind it, um, who owns the company, uh, which organization is behind such content. That's what media is basically uh, battleground of power and communication plays an important role in that context. Then we have to look into uh, the history that whether uh, the media organizations are they allied with the businesses, corporations, are they merely just entertainment corporations or is it something different. So the second point is that historically we have to see that whether it's allied with state or business corporations or entertainment corporations. Now, the next one is that is it central to the uh, institutions of democracy and capitalism? We have to look into uh, media in perspective of democracy and capitalism. These are the two key words, as you can see. How important is media media research to democracy? How How is capitalism influencing such models? If you are looking from a capitalistic perspective or Marxist perspective, it's very important to look into the bigger picture. And then importantly, how media work, how they're shaped by the economics, political and social worlds around us. Now, the key words here are the political and social worlds around us, economic as well. Uh, why is it important to look into media work from these perspectives? So all these questions and these define the bigger picture. You can't just look into media from a perspective of just it's a technology, it's just working, is it just simple broadcast or is it just simple relaying of information? No, it is much more about economics, political and social world. It connects all three of these, uh, which makes it even more important to study media. And that's why media research is very important. And then the last point is that do the media create critical citizens or consumers like are they passive audience or do we have critical citizens now we can see that sometimes the audience on social media platforms are very critical about about policies about whatever is going on in the country so that can be called as critical citizens or are they just consuming or they're just passive consumers so Moving on to our next slide, we are going to talk about mass communication, uh, the model of communication process and mapping the flow. This is how we are going to go about in the, in the, in the session today. And the difference we're going to talk about first, like there are how many streams of media. So before starting the session and we're talking about the evolution so it's very important to understand that print was the oldest form of media or mass communication. Early research studies, early researches in the field of journalism was related to print. 
and print involves newspapers, magazines, books. And then we move towards another domain, which is audio. Now, when we talk about audio, it means that it's a paradigm shift from the printed newspaper towards something that had audio. And obviously, the evolution of radio stations changed another way of uh, covering uh, mass communication research. So early research focused on print. Uh, and then later on, when audio came, even the research patterns changed, how audience perceive radio, what music they do listen to, what kind of... And then, obviously, visual came in. And then when visual, visual came in, we talk about uh, uh, television, do you talk about video games and that the digital world also came out and uh, you can see that the internet is out there today so these are all the different platforms when we talk about media research you have to look into the area you're looking to are you looking into print are you looking into audio are you looking into television and is it an audio 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 visual medium or whatever medium it is so that's what's going to define and that's how the change in technology also changed the way uh, research was being done in this domain. So let's talk about mass communication. Now, obviously, the word mass communication, the mass is the loaded word here, which means that communication from one person to group or institution through a transmission system or medium to large audiences or markets. And it implies uh, one too many. Simple as that. Now, you can read the entire slide, but in my opinion, when communication is being done from one too many, it is broadcasted from one medium and it reaches out thousands, millions, or even trillions. That's what we call mass communication. It's different from the street communication that takes place through loudspeakers. That can be group communication. But when you reach a mass audience through a technical equipment and it reaches a large number of audience, that's what we call in general mass communication. And it's, we talk about gatekeepers and transmissions. And you can see from one to many. Now, this is the key word that's, that's highlighted in the red since uh, uh, the pointer can't be shown in this keynote uh, software that I'm showing. But so you can take a guess that I'm talking about this one. Now, look at the evolution now. No, nothing explains the picture better than okay, a picture is worth a thousand words. So you can see where it starts from the left. It's a written word and then movable type and then mass publication. Obviously, when mass publication uh, came into existence with the printing press, when uh, many uh, books were published at the same time, then that was the revolution. And that gave birth to newspaper. And now we talk about emails, we talk about Twitter, we talk about tweets or social media platforms. It's the evolution goes on. So when evolution goes on, it means that the, the patterns in research are also going to change. The key point here is that no matter what you do, change is the constant thing that happens. And it means that with a change in time, change in technology, the research patterns are going to change. The way we do research in the field of communication is definitely going to change over the years. Now, let's trace the history. Tracing the history, when we talk about the history, uh, enormous complaints emerged about mass communication after the penny press circulation in the 19th century, when these were tabloid newspaper, when sensational newspapers, tabloid papers, they came into existence. That's how uh, the early studies related to communications emerged from that time period. And then uh, then we move on towards evolution again. And uh, at the 20th century began, movies arrived. And it was the form of uh, family entertainment. People were going to cinemas. So that changed the way. Early studies were confined to newspaper, printing papers or whatever. But later on, the impact of movies was very, very important, even the, in the earlier 20th century. And along with this parallel, radio also became popular medium because of its portability. People could carry radio with them anywhere. Uh, there was large audience. A lot of focus was given by the powers, uh, the ruling powers of, uh, of that era to this radio. Radio was used for propaganda. So that was very popular. And then during the 20th century, Film and broadcasting generated concerns among people 
and uh, obviously when this concern arose, um, empirical research on the effects of mass communication uh, came, the need for it came, and uh, there came a time when the research lagged far behind the development of media. And that is what, the reason why earlier studies were basically focusing more on the effects of communication and the earlier studies, that's why are called as effect studies as well. Now, tracing the history, in the decades following the World War I, when the first communication research began their work, we, we saw a lot of changes that went in media. And media also took place for the following reasons. The, the research changed, the dynamics changed because of, the, uh, because of the several reasons. And one of them is migration. A lot of migration took place in the earlier 20th century and it also changed the demographics of media research and how media shaped its audience, the effects on the audience and obviously urbanization was the another factor because a lot of people were moving out from the rural regions towards the urban regions and it also shaped uh, how uh, communications were taking place uh, through network organization which were focus focusing more in the cities. And then obviously another factor that led to the, uh, the development uh, of uh, media in the 20th century was industrialization. Uh, and industrialization played a key role because it was giving employment to people. People were coming out from their regions and that's the reason why uh, more and more people were moving towards cities because industries were set up there. And then the last one uh, we can talk about is modernization because changes were taking place in the lifestyles and also it shaped the way people were consuming. Uh, mass communication content. So it, all these factors from migration, urbanization, industrialization and modernization played a key role in shaping uh, uh, the mass media culture. Then uh, we move towards the uh, transmission model of communication. What is transmission model of communication? Obviously when we talk about transmission model uh, we, we talk about the early uh, models of communication and when our students come to our department the first model that we introduce them is the sender message receiver what is sender message receiver obviously it's smr model of communication which means that there's a sender there's a message and obviously there's someone to receive the message and that's the most basic model of communication it's based on harold laswell's model of 1948 and uh, it what it does basically uh, what it does is that it helps identify the stages through which communication passes so one could be properly studied like the first stage is the sender stage then there's a message and then it's the receiver now what it what has happened the transmission model of communication is is not uh, it's a very simple model and may not be as applicable today as it was in the back days because in the back days uh, since they were early days, the basic models, it provided gateway for bigger studies, but it can't be applied. So now modern models, as you can see the next point is that modern models recognize networks are more complex and they no longer is one way or there's more interaction and now there's even feedback between sending and receiving. So now you could see that the simple model sender message receiver was one way. You send a message, it's received and that's it, but no. Nowadays, if you look at different models, and particularly social media, even if you're watching content, you can give instant feedback. So now what does that feedback mean? It means that it's, it's, a, it's, it's in a cycle. You, can, you cannot say it's just a one-way linear model. It's just it's in a cycle. It's a feedback there. It goes round and round. It's different from what it's the early models are considered. So... This also, we talk. let's talk now in the next slide, let's talk about transmission model and questions. Now, obviously, who says what to whom, with what effect, it's the transmission model. Who, where is it coming from, whom is it addressed to, and what is going to be the effect? Now, this question is obviously, it's all about the effect studies. Uh, even the question in itself is self-explanatory that all these transmission models, the early models, were effect studies. And they were, in a way, they were not as bad. They were useful because it discussed propaganda. It discussed the effects of advertisement, stimulus responses. And obviously, it was a critical time. Now, uh, 
also keeping in view the transmission mo transmission model and questions uh, mass communication was seen as a process of transmitting intentional message for the purpose of social control or marketing the key word here is social control it was seen as a tool used for social control that's why all the earlier studies focused more on the effects of media how media is affecting the audience how radio is affecting how television is affecting or how cinema is affecting now all the studies were because they were most it was more about the social control and then the next point that we need to talk about is that it implies that the study of state or government policies economic process of advertisement and commodification of popular culture that obviously effect studies were more into the, these processes as well it was looking into commodification of popular culture as well uh, so this is the important reason why effect studies because starting from the uh, when we talk about it started from the effects started from the propaganda and advertisement because of the politics uh, around the world in those days were quite serious the countries were attacking each other they they looked into media as a form of uh, how it's going to affect the audience it was looked into in terms of social control it was looked in terms of government policies economic processes advertisement and obviously culture so these are all the important points that you need to keep in mind why transmission model was so popular in the early days why effect studies were popular because uh, it was the politics uh, that was shaping it in back then then obviously we have to talk about technology and change and how the transformation uh, has also shaped the way we do research and communication studies these days and the transformation of uh, mass communication it all began with the arrival of computers and when the two-way interactive technology came forward now like if you take back the internet like 20 years ago it was surprising uh, to see someone communicating at the same time when you're typing here on a chat platform and someone from outside Pakistan or somewhere uh, in, in a foreign country or wherever in the world who's connected through internet could message you it that was the time when once again a revolution took place and the studies related to two-way communication started and internet is the main reason for such an evolution it was surprising the world got interconnected the terms such as global village came into origin and the world was more connected than ever and it's called like connected without borders now the concept of borders always finished you're connected to the internet you're connected with the entire world now the concept from one to one from many to many and a different concept came and then obviously uh, the for uh, for the rise of transactional media like paper bit like you could pay for media if you want to watch and have subscription to a particular channel you pay money that also started and then there also started a movement of resistance of media piracy swapping and downloading we can see that in in the modern countries there's a lot of uh, lot of uh, laws related to piracy that stops people from swapping or downloading uh, materials such as videos or even the text or the books uh, because they believe that uh, this that, that leads to plagiarism that leads to the market meltdown and it also destroys who invested in the authors so uh, the, the, these kind of studies also started the resistance uh, also started in the mass media studies change shifted from the effect studies to different kind of studies and obviously we are going to talk about the trends in communication now now what are the trends in communication there are different trends when it comes to the one of the trend is the compression of space and time now you can see that uh, the larger and uh, territories are covered networks are emerging with World Wide Web, www, you can access anything, anytime. You can have access to live coverage of television. Uh, you can have live access to football, cricket matches. Now, that's called the compression of space and time. You no longer uh, have to worry about all these uh, space and time issues. You are just there. You have access to it. And this is what the world has shrunk. Now, this shrinking is called compression. You no longer have to think about uh, going and traveling and physically moving you are there you're connected to the entire world through satellites through internet uh, that's that's a remarkable change that took place in the last 30 40 years it's just revolutionized the entire world 
the mobile connection, the wireless untethered access, the communication across border. And now, more recently in pandemic, we have seen that uh, through platforms such as Zoom or Google Meets, uh, conferences are taking place. The, since uh, pen, uh, due to pandemic, there cannot be physical conferences. People are arranging the entire conferences through Zoom and through, through these uh, platforms. Uh, this is remarkable. This shows that even despite moving physically, uh, the world is connected. The events can be organized. People can meet. People can have their routine business. And e-businesses are taking place. People are ordering online. So a lot of change. Now, since we've talked about ordering online, we have to talk about commodification. Now, we have seen the spread of private enterprises. Uh, we have seen that the marketing, the consumption of media, people are making their own content. We can see uh, the rise of uh, own production. Looking, one of such examples can be TikTok or other platforms where Instagrams, people are publishing their own videos. Now, this is obviously, it also explains the widespread ideology of consumption and consumer. All kinds of content is coming and that's why the mass media research uh, is done into these uh, areas as well that whether or what or what kind of content is coming out, is it having some legal or ethical complications. So commodification is another trend in communications and it is an area where you can, can have research as well. Now one thing is important, you don't have to look at research from moral perspective. That, that's entirely difficult and different perspective because who will define morality? But obviously you can look into how it's going, what are the trends are, why people are following it, what are the major trends and things like that. That's particularly when it when we are talking about mass communication research. And then obviously deregulation and concentration uh, uh, and uh, concentration and then conglomeration, which is withdrawal of public sector, less regulation, now we can see that market is the major influencer, market determines prices, market determines everything. It's a, it's a neoliberal policies, which, which we can say is a, it's a new capitalist policies. It can be harsh, but obviously it is also a trend in communication. And then multimedia uh, holdings, you can see uh, mergers, acquisitions. So a lot of changes are taking place and we need to, to keep the track of these trends. We look, at, look at the first point is compression of time and space obviously yes time is shrunk the second point is commodification spread of private and uh, private enterprises the, the 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 how market is taking place how people are consuming media the third one is deregulation and concentration and conglomeration how uh, the public sector is shrinking and uh, is more private sector and how the, the 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 mergers and acquisitions are taking place then obviously we have globalization Obviously, globalization, everyone knows what globalization, the world is more global than before. Uh, the, the, the big companies are dominating markets. And we, similarly for media, because the dominant companies are all over the world. Like uh, you can see that a film is produced by one company, then several distributing companies are also part of the bigger company. And that's part of the globalization. And then we have uh, digitization and convergences. Uh, conversion of sound and pictures into computer readable formats, uh, obviously telecommunications and all these things. And uh, digitization enables the production, circulation, manipulation and repurposing or storage of information on unprecedented scale. But anyway, uh, we can talk about uh, the specialization, narrowly casting, targeting communication to particular interests. And that's another trend like you know your target audience you can design a message for them and that's the trends in communication you need to look forward to for example hashtag is there these days it's used popularly by a group of influencers when they post something on twitter a trend becomes and uh, uh, the whole topic goes around uh, the whole discussions goes around the public opinion is formed on those lines so it's a tricky world it's a tricky place and then personalization people make uh, uh, people can use uh, messages according to their own needs like uh, Netflix is a very good example you don't have no longer have to buy a DVD you can just go on and watch a personalized movies if you want to watch a thriller you can go to a thriller genre if you want to go to a drama you can click a drama genre and that's how you have a personalization effect and that's the new trend if you want to study how why people select a particular genre of a movie why some people watch thriller why some people watch comedy 
that's another area of research and you can look into so going back again because since we've talked more about the evolution now let's go let's once again rewind it up that uh, the sustained research in the field of mass communication developed in the US from 1930s onwards obviously this is the peak time for effect studies and it happened some 40 years after the birth of modern media between 1890 and 1920 when the ri rapid rise of uh, circulated newspapers and cinema and development of radio were all taking place simultaneously radio newspaper and obviously cinema all of these three were converged in this time period it was considered uh, as an expansion of mass media in those times and uh, that's why in this situation a large scale of empirical research began through the use of unsophisticated methods having many shortcomings so the the, the expansion was big the research tools were quite less the field of mass communication was not as developed because uh, there were no uh, mass communication schools the, the subject the journalism schools they all later evolved from sociology and all different subjects later on after 40 years 30 years uh, the disciplines began to be established and that that's where the real research in in these areas began so we cannot say the real research but the the, the, the much more sophisticated methods began uh, in this period and then uh, we have uh, dominant perspectives uh, what is the dominant the prevailing concerns of this period help understand the discussion of media theory and the birth of mass media uh, basically was widespread large scale in western society and it was considered as the arrival of modernity and uh, basically uh, the rise of media and the impact of modernity was important for initial thinking people started to do research what is the effect of media how media will affect our lifestyles is, is it going to have an effect on culture or religious practices so these are the dominant perspectives back in the day that shaped media research and then obviously uh, effect studies were there uh, effect studies uh, media could have a powerful impact on human civilization and creating mass societies in response to mass media this is uh, the, then the use of communication and information war for the first time used in military history in world war 1 as a essential weapon of warfare so you can see the communication and information were used in the terms of war as well as i said the time period the 20th century the world war 1 and world war 2 were crucial for effect studies because uh, even germany and even american and allied states they were all looking forward to the powerful effects of media and particularly radio how radio is going to affect and how uh, later on uh, the the propaganda documentaries were produced how media can shape public opinion so that's why effect studies were popular in the early days now enormous national propaganda by the u.s using every method of public communication that uh, that they could fight the uh, the wars and obviously as i said the germans and the united states both use these mediums uh, to propagate their part of the propaganda and that's why effect studies were popular in the in the uh, particularly in the American American educational sphere and uh, the reason was that the situation was that uh, Europe was much more looking towards the resistance how democracy and they were looking towards discourses whereas the uh, American uh, American uh, academia was looking into effect studies because circumstances were different in America uh, they were developing big giant organizations uh, there was uh, the situation was pretty much calm uh, compared to the Europe. Europe was under turmoil. Europe was facing resistance. All kind of issues were taking place. So that's why the research patterns in Europe were different to that of America. And that's why that that someday we'll discuss in detail what kind of research emerged uh, in the in the twentieth century in both America and Europe, and why Europe was the central hub of discourses, linguistics, semiotics whereas the Americans focused more on the transmission model of communication. Now, coming back again to effect studies, uh, the books such as Public Opinion by Walter Lippmann, it came in 1922, it supported the effect studies, 
Uh, obviously, Hitler, the rise of Hitler was more about effect studies. Propaganda techniques in World War by Harold uh, was and the pain fund studies from 1929 to 19. All these are examples of effect studies, why they were so popular. And obviously, invasion from Mars, where people thought that the aliens have invaded the Earth. Uh, so, so, yes, now we move towards the questions towards the end. So, this explains... The, that the early models of uh, before before starting this question it's important to understand that the early phase was much more about effect studies from 1920 to 1960 or 50 we can understand the Laswell model and different studies that explained the effect studies uh, they were pretty popular because uh, it was a, it was popular at the time to study more about the effects of communications rather than uh, the complexities of cultural studies and obviously later on in Europe the British cultural studies the Stuart Hall and uh, Raymond Williams they contributed a lot more towards cultural studies and obviously later on uh, through Ferdinand de Saussure the semiotics and then this courses it changed the shape we do research in communications today and it's more about uh, discourses critical discourse these days uh, much more sophisticated methods of uh, analyzing a, a phenomena has emerged but obviously uh, we cannot say that these media effects were completely outdated or wrong because it obviously shaped the way we do research in the modern times today so the question is that uh, what do you think about media evolution how has the evolution changed the way we do research in mass communication is there a single approach or can we combine various methods so you can think about more questions, but this is it uh, for today. We'll be talking about uh, more trends in research and communication research. And obviously, uh, my students have asked me more about uh, semiotics, uh, more about discourses, and particularly how to analyze films and dramas. So we'll be talking more about that in our coming sessions. Thank you very much for being with us. And these are some of the references that we've used. Uh, thank you very much and have a great day. Thank you.